Hey everybody and welcome to my High Level Abyssal Sire Guide. So a short disclaimer before I get into this. Yes, this guide is tailored for higher level players who have higher level gear and stats. However, the strategy for killing the boss is the exact same regardless of what levels you are and what gear you have. So just thought I'd throw that out there before anyone comments on how they should kill the boss at a certain level. Killing the boss is the exact same each time. This is just to show how to do it pretty quickly with high level stats and high level gear. So apart from the obvious 85 Slayer requirement for the Sire, I would highly recommend to have at least 88 magic. This is so you can cast Shadow Barrage. Now recently all the Shadow spells were updated at Sire so that each tier has a different percentage of stunning him. The lowest tier spell has a 25% chance, the second tier has a 50% chance, third tier has a 75% chance, and the Shadow Barrage is a 100% stun. So it's highly recommended to have at least 88 magic for this boss. 75 plus range just so you can use the blowpipe and the accumulator. 90 plus melee, this is up for debate. I chose to say 90 plus melee because I believe it personally is a decent amount of levels that a lot of people may have and it's plenty enough to get this boss killed in a timely manner. And then 70 plus prayer for piety. Piety will make all the difference. These stats are completely up for debate. If you think there are certain stats that you think could be lower or higher, that's your personal preference. But these are those stats that I would at least recommend those who are comfortable with the boss and know what they're doing for the most part. Now the Abyssal Sire is extremely weak to stab, so the setup we're going to be bringing is to try to maximize stab bonus while at the same time having a good balance of strength bonus. So the setup here is the Slayer Helmet, the Fury, Bandos Tacits and Chestplate, Barrow's Gloves, Primordial Boots, Berserker Ring Imbued, Zamorakian Hosta, Dragon Defender, and the Arty Cloak 4. If you don't have the Arty Cloak, you can bring a Fire Cape. Dragon Boots can be replaced for the Primordial Boots. If you want to try to maximize your stab bonus as much as you possibly can, you can use a Treasonous Ring. And if you just can't afford Bandos at the moment, or if you're an Iron Man or whatever, Bearer's Armor will work here. And so let's go on to the inventory. So my inventory for the Sire consists of six Stamina Potions, two Super Combat Potions, an Antidote Plus Plus, Crystal Halberd, Accumulator, Toxic Blowpipe, Desert Amulet 4, the Quest Cape, a Rune Pouch, and a decent number of Air Runes. Now, if you don't have the Lumbridge Elite Diary done, you do need to bring a Lunar slash Draymond Staff with you. And also, if you choose not to use the Blowpipe, a Trident will work, but I like the Blowpipe because it has a bit more DPS. One thing that a lot of people like to bring is a chest plate or Dragon Hide Body Switch. I don't really think this is necessary because all the kills I've done just putting on the Blowpipe and keeping Bandos on, it's worked out quite well. So I don't think you should waste a spot to bring a chest plate switch. Uh, the Crystal Halberd. Now, the spec weapons here are very, very debatable. Crystal Halberd is my favorite spec weapon to bring here just because the damage it does is just ridiculous. Dragon Halberd will work as well if you don't have the diary complete. Now, if I didn't have a Halberd, my second option would probably be the Ceridome and God Sword. Just have a little bit more prayer and health restoration. Now, a lot of people say to bring the Dragon Warhammer or Bandos God Sword so you can drain his defense. The problem with that is the Sire's defense is already pretty dang low, and I really don't feel like those specs help out too much, so I prefer to bring a spec weapon that can just deal a whole bunch of damage, and the Crystal Halberd does a lot of damage for me. Uh, the Desert Amulet is just my teleport out, and you can bring a Teletab, or you can use the Arty Cloak Tele if you have that. The quest cape is to get me to a fairy ring faster. Recently, they added the perk to the quest cape to where it teleports you right outside the Legends Guild, so that is now the closest teleport near a fairy ring. If you don't have the quest cape, you can bring a slayer ring, or you can bring uh, just your arty cloak and teleport to the Kandoran Monastery, run east to the Tower of Life, and there's a fairy ring there. Any kind of fairy ring you can bring, or any kind of fairy ring you have access to is perfectly fine. And then the rune pouch, this is full of death runes, blood runes, and soul runes. This is so I have my runes in there for casting blood barrage. 
and the 5,000 air runes on the outside are used to cast the Shadow Barrage. So the Abyssal Sire is very interesting when it comes to its drops. Now its basic drop table is actually not too bad. It's got a lot of noted rune armor, rune swords, magic logs, pure essence, battle stabs, a lot of skilling kind of supplies. But then it has the Unsired. Now the Unsired is the unique you get from the Abyssal Sire. It's a 1 out of 100 drop rate. Now if you get the Unsired, what you do is you take this to the Font of Consumption, which is located just inside the Fairy Ring. You use the Unsired on this font and it will return you with a random item, which is now listed on your screen. And I also provided the rarity for each item. Now the Bludgeon Claw, Spine, and Accent are all untradeable items. And in order to make the bludgeon, you need to collect all three of these. And when you do, you take them to the Overseer. When you talk to the Overseer, he will make you the Abyssal Bludgeon. And afterwards, he'll disappear and leave behind the Overseer's book. And when you take this book, this is what you'll use from now on if you collect all three pieces again to make the bludgeon. And the other item on the Abyssal Sire's drop table that I thought was worth mentioning is, of course, the Elite Clue Scroll. So I thought I'd just put this on here to explain how the Unsired works. It's pretty simple, and it can get you some pretty good stuff. So let's get on into getting to the boss. So once you've made your way through the Abyssal Nexus, found yourself an empty chamber, you'll be faced in front of the Abyssal Sire. Now, it's not an aggressive boss, meaning you'll have to initiate the fight. So you can kind of look around and see what you have to deal with. Obviously, you've got the Sire, but also you've got the respiratory systems, as well as the tentacles. Now, what you have to do with the Sire is, you have to disorient him so that he falls asleep and he can't use the tentacles. When he uses the tentacles, they can do a lot of damage to you rapidly and it severely impacts the amount of damage you can do on the respiratory systems which you need to destroy. And I'll go ahead and show you kind of a generated area of where you can stand, where the tentacles will not hit you, and what areas they will hit you in if you end up standing in those areas. The areas in red are kind of a baseline of where your character will most likely be standing if he does hit that area, but everything to the sides of those are also able to be hit by the tentacles. So if you're near the respirators, you're also at risk of being hit by the tentacles. So to start off the kill, you basically want to wake up the sire by attacking him with the blowpipe. Two hits on him with long range on the blowpipe will be enough to wake him up and activate the tentacles. And then casting a shadow barrage on him to stun him will allow you to go and attack the respirators. Respirators are pretty easy to kill. Sometimes it can be a bit of a frustration because you do hit a lot of zeros a lot of the time. But for the most part, one stun is enough to get two respirators killed before he wakes back up again. Once you get both of the respirators on one side destroyed, just go back up to the side, wait for him to wake up, cast your barrage on him again, and continue that last process for the other two respirators, and you'll be ready to move on to the next phase of the kill. Once all the respirators have been killed, put on your melee gear, and there will be like a little line in the middle of the room right where my cursor's at. You're going to stand on that line, pot up, and activate protect from melee. Now, as soon as you see the attack option on the Sire, you want to instantly go and attack him. 
Now the Sire has a couple of different attacks he can throw at you. He's got his basic attack, which I'll show right now. That attack is his basic melee attack. That will be protected pretty much the entire fight. Now his second attack is a little bit more aggressive, and I'll show that one right now. Now that attack is mostly protected, but it can still do a little bit of damage to you. It's not too bad. But then he has his stronger attack, which I will show right now. Now when he hits you with those two whips on his back, that can do about 25 damage, even through your protect from melee. If you're not protecting melee, that can potentially do about 60 damage max, I do believe. So apart from his three main attacks he can do, he also has two special abilities he can do throughout this phase. He can spawn the Scions, which start off as spawns, and then they will eventually, after 12 seconds, evolve into Scions. Now, I wouldn't recommend killing these because they can actually be very helpful on the next phase. His other special attack, as just shown on screen, he can spawn these Poison Pools. Now, if you stand directly on these Poisons, they can do about 31 damage max, and they hit rapidly. If you're standing one square away, they can still hit you rapidly, but with much reduced damage. So it's kind of advised to keep a space between you and the poison pool so you don't get hit by it. So a lot of guides will tell you to help avoid the poison pools to keep running back and forth between a couple squares so that when he spawns them, you'll run away from them. You can do this, but there's actually an easier way to get away from this and it's to watch the sire's movements. When he spawns these poison pools there's an animation he does and if you are quick enough you can completely avoid the pool at all costs without having to keep moving around the sire and I'll go ahead and show you what this movement is right now. So as you can see, before he throws down this poison pool, he kind of constricts his body. And when he constricts that, that's how I know that he's about to put that down. I can move out of the way just in time. So instead of running around the sire like crazy, just watch for him to do that constriction. Once he does, you know exactly when to move. Easy to avoid. Now once the sire goes below 200 hit points, he's going to move into his next phase. What we're going to do is walk back down to that line that we stood on before and we're going to switch over to protect from range. Now the sire is going to spawn some little scions and he's also going to spawn poison pools. Now these poison pools after a couple seconds are going to go to where your character was last standing. So what you do is you go and stand between both of his legs that way you're in the range of the tentacles where they can hit you and you're also avoiding the pool. As you're alternating and attacking the Sire and missing the Poison Pools, eventually he will teleport you. Now, during this entire phase, he's been charging up a massive attack. Now this attack will explode and you have to move out of the way. Let me go ahead and show you what happens when you don't move out of the way. Just to clarify, yes, that was done on purpose just to demonstrate what happens when you take that explosion. The max hit from that explosion, I believe, is a 72, so you definitely want to be careful and make sure you do move out of the way as fast as you can. Now, when you do move out of the way, what you're going to do is you're going to run back to him as soon as he explodes and attack him twice. Once you attack him twice, a poison pool will spawn underneath you, which means you need to run away again. After a couple seconds of running away, you can run back to him and continue attacking. And if you need to heal, I will show you exactly where you need to go to heal. So if you find yourself low on hit points, you need to heal. What you're going to do is run all the way to the southeast behind the final set of tentacles. This will stack the scions behind that little lip there, and you can heal on these guys. And once you do, you are pretty much ready to finish the kill. So the ending of the kill is pretty simple. Just step back into where the tentacles won't attack you and this is where you're gonna to wanna to unload your special attack. Usually a crystal halberd is gonna be well powerful enough to do the rest of the damage on the sire. What I like to do is hit one spec. If it doesn't hit him, 
run through the sire to the other side and wait for the spec to recharge and hit him from that side. If it still doesn't attack him and kill him, then run back through and hit him again. And just rinse and repeat until he's dead. Again, if you do start taking more damage than you'd like to, you can go back and heal again and then come back with the Hosta and finish him stabbing him. But the special attack is usually good enough to take him out. So now let's run through a full kill and live commentary. So attack him twice on long range. After the second attack, go ahead and stun him and start working on the respirators. As stated before, as long as you can hit decently on these, one stun is usually enough to kill two respirators, so hopefully we can get that done. If you want, you can turn on Eagle Eye, but most of the time it's not really needed. Okay, there we go. Move back out and re-stun. And we'll start working on these two. So far, so good. Excellent. So now let's put on our stab gear and stand on this little line here. As soon as he starts coming towards us, we'll put on our quick prayers, wait for the attack option to come up, and immediately hit him. There it is. Hopefully not hit a bunch of zeros. So as you can see, he constricted a little bit there. I knew he was gonna throw out the poison pool. I was able to move just in time. He did it again, but I was already on the move. Just need to hit six damage here and we'll be good. There we go, one more hit and stand back on our little line here. Let's get our prayer up a little bit. Now we do our moving between those two legs. to teleport we're gonna run back here and heal let these guys stack there we go and let's go ahead and try to get some specs in here run through them and spec again and run back through and spec one more time all right, let's just get a quick heal here and then just run back at him. And there we go. Well, if you made it this far, I wanna thank you for watching. Hope this guy helps you all out in the long run. Like I said, it's tailored more for high level players, but the actual strategy for killing the boss itself is going to be the exact same for everybody. So, hope you guys enjoyed the guide. If you did, a rating would be appreciated. And if you want to see any more guides, possibly in the future, let me know and I can try my best to make that happen. Till then, see you all later.